Hello and welcome to A flat major. A flat major has four flats: B flat, E flat, A flat, and the new flat is D flat. Yeah. So let's see what the finger pattern is going to be. So lowest note on the violin is obviously the G, and a semitone higher. So with a low first finger, we have the first note of the scale, the A flat. Yeah. So what we're looking at is we're going to have third and fourth fingers against each other on the lowest two strings and the second and third against each other on the highest two strings. So let's walk through the entire scale. A flat, B flat, C natural, D flat, E flat, still a low first finger, F, G, and A flat. So it's the first octave, and we had low first finger on both strings, and three and four against each other on both strings. Yeah. Now this fourth finger is the ending of the first scale, well, the first octave, and the beginning of the next. So second, we can repeat that A flat. Low first finger for the B flat. C natural. D flat, so semitone between two and three. E flat. F natural, which is again a low first finger. G. And A flat. So now we're missing this one note, that would be a B flat. But we're not going to use that today because we have the luxury of having a full two octave scale going from the first finger on the G string to the third finger on the E string. Now, if you look at the finger pattern, we have a low first finger throughout, third and fourth against each other on the lowest two strings, second and third finger against each other on the highest two strings. Yeah, which is exactly the same finger pattern as A major, only your first fingers were in the normal place. So every single note, the entire structure is exactly the same, except for now it's a semitone lower than A major. So A flat major, every single note is a semitone lower than the A major. The finger pattern is identical, we just move your hand a semitone further away. So A sharp major, essentially, would have again the exact same finger pattern, only you would have brought your hand a semitone closer to you. Yeah. So every single two octave scale that starts on the first finger on the G string is going to have the same finger pattern. 3, 4, 3, 4, 2, 3, 2, 3. No matter where you start, yeah? Now we see more and more scales, we can see more and more parallels. Anyway, um next thing to discuss is the rhythm. We have a two-beat note, a minute, a half note. Yeah, and we want to use a whole bow there. <laughs> And then we have four quavers at the tip, four one eight notes. And on the next note, same thing happens, but now we have a two beat up bow. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and so on and so on. Yeah, so you have first quavers at the tip, next quavers at the heel, then back to the tip, back to the heel. Um, if you've done the previous scales, the E flat major and the C melodic minor, there we had a three beat note to begin the bar and two quavers at the tip. And then a three beat note back to the heel and two quavers at the heel. And I talked a lot about sound quality to even out the balance of the quavers at the tip with the quavers at the heel, yeah? If you don't anticipate anything, you're going to have very quiet... Well, the bow goes automatically diminuendo throughout the dumbo. And then crescendo on the way back. But if you don't do anything, you have to anticipate that, so you have to think a little bit crescendo on the way on the dumbo. So you try to start fairly quiet, let's say metaphorte. forte. And you go. And you think diminuendo. And you go again. So I 
would suggest that if you struggle with this, that you start with the caricature of what you're supposed to have. So you try to start as quiet as possible. Control that without tensing up too much. Yeah, it's balance in the hand that you have to use. Um, yeah, don't stop pressing down. Look at the lectures on dynamics. Um, they will help you control this. There are several ways to achieve this. Pick and choose. You need to know them all. Yeah, but learn with start with whatever you find easiest first. But think massive crescendo towards the tip. And massive diminuendo, and when you can do that, you just work a little bit less hard, and it will start evening itself out. Yeah, sometimes working with caricatures of what you try to achieve, just going overboard with too loud, too quiet, uh, you learn a lot. Um, so yeah, that's my recommendations. Now let's work our way through the entire scale very, very slowly. So start with the low first finger. Yeah, on the G string. One. Two, three, four. Prepare low first. A flat. Back down. Prepare the two and three. Low four. Prepare with three and four against each other now. So that's it, it's a long scale, it's a full two octaves and it's four beats per note. But once you know the finger patterns, start concentrating on the sound quality, the relaxation, all those things. Yes, I keep repeating myself. But trust me, it's worth repeating this scale four or five times at this speed. Once you know it, yeah. And pay attention once on the thumbs, the shoulders next time. Make sure the sound quality is nice. 
Make sure. Don't try to do everything at once. Really concentrate on one issue at a time. Get that perfect. And if you notice it isn't right, pause. Figure out why. Do some exercises and try again. Yeah? Be patient. The fastest way to move forward is to be in control. And that comes from repeating the right thing in the right way. So many times that you forgot, forget all the wrong ways to do it. And that's it, really. Muscle memory and dedication. Anyway, I'll see you at 60. And uh, yeah, good luck.